Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge MX750C, and specifically we're going to focus on solid state drives today. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge MX750C. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. We'll top in. Uh, this video is going to be specifically focused on solid state drives. Uh, we're going to go over some of the different uh, types that are compatible, uh, the speeds for those different types, and the max capacity. Then we're going to actually install one for you. And at the end of the video, we're going to test this with two different tools that we like. Uh, Dell Diagnostics, which will uh, do a test that Dell uses that not only tests the drive, but tests the whole blade as itself. And then we're also going to use a tool called HD Sentinel, which will show you power on hours, health scores, and just some uh, cool features like that that we're a big fan of. So, so what types are compatible with the MX750C? Well, you can put in a SATA SSD, a SAS SSD, or an NVMe SSD. And the cool thing about the MX750C is that it has a tri backplane, which means it'll accept all three of them. So whichever one you want to go with with your configuration, you can throw in a bunch of NVMe or SAS or SATA, just whatever your preference is for your application. So what are the max speeds that you can get with each one? Well, with SATA, the max is six gigabit per second. With SAS, it's 12 gigabit per second. And with NVMe, it is 16 gigabit per second. But I do want to note, to achieve 16 for NVMe, you do need to make sure that you have a PCIe 4.0 for your hardware RAID, and you do need to make sure that your M.2s are NVMe as well. That's the key just to make sure that you can get all the way up to the 16 gigabit performance, okay? So what's the max size that you can put in? Well, it's the same for all three of them. You can put in 7.68 terabytes, and there's a whole bunch of sizes down below that you can put in all the way as low if you want to throw in some, you know, 120 gig or 240 gig boot drives, they'll technically work, um, and you can put anything else in between. Nowadays, for new, it's pretty hard to get uh, 480 and um, 960, even though they are available and we have those options. Uh, most of the stuff that we're generally building with uh, for customers is, you know, 1.92, 3.84, 7.68. Uh, some customers want three data write per second, which we have those options on our website as well, and those will be more of like a um, uh, 1.6 or 3.2 or uh, 6.4 terabytes. So uh, we kind of cover the gambit of uh, what you'd want for your machine. Um, I do note uh, for um, the options on our website, they're all going to be OEM drives. They're not going to be Dell label drives, uh, which will work perfectly fine with your machine and cost a heck of a lot less. Um, so definitely check out our site for some just different options and way better pricing that you're going to see on Dell.com. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and hop in and show you how to physically install these, which is very, very easy because uh, it's a hot swap, so it just pops in and out. Uh, so we'll show you how to do that real quick. All right, so let's show you just how easy it is to swap this out. So let's remove our old drive. We're just going to push the red circle. And one thing I should note while we're talking about this, the trays are actually different uh, for the blades than they are for the rack mounts. Um, so if you order on our site, for instance, we will make sure that you get the right blade or the right trays uh, that go specifically for the blade because these are a little bit shorter. Um, so they don't. Uh, you can't just take a, a rack mount. Uh, tray and, and throw it in here, which are you know kind of the more common trays. It uh, just won't physically fit. So again, just the red circle. So I, the other thing I do want to note, you actually have to kind of flip this over. You're going to see the the uh, the inside or the back side of the drive uh, to actually install this. So there's one other important note, but again, super easy. You just slide it in, click it into place. I'll do it one more time for you. Uh, again, it's going to look upside down. You slide it in. I mean, a very, very easy install. Uh, one of the things that I always recommend, too, is that uh, if you upgrade the SSDs, it will definitely boost the performance of your blade as a whole. Uh, it's one of the, the quickest and easiest ways to do it. Um, and it's something that, to me, again, if you're going after performance, is uh, the best thing to do. You'll get way better performance out of an SSD than you will out of a hard drive. So now let's show you how to test it with Dell Diag and with HD Sentinel. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. 
Once you're in the lifecycle controller, you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side, and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen, but you just want to go ahead and press yes. And it'll take a little bit of a second to load, but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there is a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's going to be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. One thing I do want to mention about Di Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue. Or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC. But you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can, this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software and like I said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe, and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.